Jim, if you lead it off and tell us a little bit about uh, your uh, taking the book and adapting the film and your look now at the, uh, at the finished product. Hello. Thank you all for being here. What an audience. I mean, I've seen it a few times now, but this was amazing watching with you guys. So, terrific. Um, it was uh, the beginning of August. I got a call from Paul Mark asking me if I'd be uh, possibly interested in directing uh, this uh, this movie. And they sent me the script. And uh, it was beautiful in Vermont. There's a few couple of beautiful months there. August is one of them. Uh, and they wanted to know if I wanted to leave immediately and come film in uh, North Carolina and Alabama. And I was a little reluctant, uh, even after reading the script. Um, but then I asked them if they would send me the book that the script was based on, and reading the book, I couldn't turn the project down. Um, to me, it was a, uh, inspiring, it made me laugh, it made me cry. And I just saw it as a treasure chest of scenes and characters uh, that I knew uh, would make for a terrific movie. And so uh, I said, let me, uh, let me take another step at the script, going back to the book. And they gave me a week. And uh, I don't think I've ever worked harder or longer uh, in a one week period in my entire life. But um, I basically, uh, went back to the book and what you see is what we did. And uh, I want to thank everyone at Space Camp. This was, you know, the idea of coming and filming all these big machines and big rockets was a little intimidating because I usually do uh, uh, personal dramas, uh, not big action things, uh, not a lot of big machinery in my movies. Um, but uh, everyone here at Space Camp made this so much fun, so easy, so accessible. Uh, and uh, it was great. It was a, it was just a great, great experience. Yeah. Jim, and you'll be heading uh, back up to Vermont for a screening on Sunday night with Tanner uh, in in the film. That's where Tanner lives in Woodstock. That's right. The uh, the young man who plays Adam, uh, the the very large young man who plays Adam. Uh, was a participant, or is a participant, in a, an enrichment uh, workshop that uh, uh, exists in Woodstock for people who are challenged and have learning disabilities who have already finished high school and have, uh, don't have a lot of other opportunities. And when I was offered the script, um, my daughter, who was working at this enrichment center named Zach's Place, and my wife, who's sitting in the audience, who's a board member of Zach's Place, both urged me to go there uh, and spend one day there and see if it wouldn't, you know, entice me to do this project. And that's where I met Tanner. And I said, oh my God, Tanner could be Adam. And uh, he had to audition like everyone else. Uh, he had to audition many times, actually. And uh, he ended up getting cast. And I'm really looking forward to having a screening. The screening's going to be at Woodstock Sunday afternoon. And uh, I think it should be quite, quite entertaining. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Dr. Barnhart, if you would uh, share your thoughts looking back now 23 years ago, and then now back as CEO on uh, a little bit about uh, the project and the film. Um, I love Huntsville, and I love this place. This is the best work that anyone could want. <laughs> Logan, if you'd share a little bit of your thoughts on uh, playing Scott Gowdy, a little bit of the role, of what you uh, had to do to kind of put yourself uh, in his shoes, so to speak. Well, uh, I actually just met Scott like uh, like about two hours ago. So, <laughs> um, I, I was really lucky. Mike uh, Courage has helped me out a lot. I tried to do the best best I could. But I related a lot uh, to Scott because uh, I had dyslexia growing up, and I spent uh, most of my time in uh, LD classes my entire student career. It took me until the ninth grade to learn how to read, so I was I was aware of the struggles you have to face in LD classes and how many teachers kind of count you out. And I had a teacher by the name of Mr. Walters, who was kind of my Mr. Curtis. And uh, it's amazing what uh, 
what one teacher could do and give you a, give you hope and pride. And uh, I, I'm just honored. I'm honored to be here, and I, it's I, I feel like the luckiest guy on earth. It's, it's pretty amazing. Thank you. Scott, this is the second time you've seen the, the film. You saw it up, uh, of course, in Grand Rapids on Monday. Uh, we, uh, we gave you the hard sell at coming back to Huntsville, and uh, by the time we got to Thursday morning out of Los Angeles, uh, we called you up and, and uh, convinced you to come back to Huntsville, return here for the first time, correct? Correct. Graduate. Okay. Share with us your thoughts, uh, having seen it now, and, uh, and, your, and a little bit about uh, 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 maybe how Space Camp had uh, Inspired or changed you after your visit? Changed me for, oh my gosh, it's huge now. And I just love being here, everybody being here. And I just hope and pray that uh, we can have more challenged people come because, I don't know, it's just, it's a wow. <laughs> Mr. Kerr just did a wonderful job. Everybody here did a wonderful job. Him doing my facial expressions and all that. He didn't even know me. Just, wow. Sorry I can't say anything else than that, but wow. <laughs> You uh, hail from Scotland. And I do. You do. And you had to, uh, had to be uh, a counselor, crew trainer from Alabama, working at Space Camp. So tell us a little about your preparation for the role and, uh, and, and your thoughts now. Well, I happen to love the South. So uh, when I was a little girl, I used to watch a lot of uh, movies based in the South and used to try and mimic the accent. So I don't know if we did a, a reasonable job or not. I guess I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. But um, I, 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 I think there's such an incredible warmth in the South. And as I was sitting in this audience this evening, I was feeling the way I, I, I felt on the set. And that is like I'm surrounded by a bunch of really extraordinary, warm, happy, supportive people. I've never sat in an audience for any movie that I've ever done and felt this kind of warmth in the room. And um, it really felt like that on the set from our director Jim all the way down to um, one of our ADs, Kate, who's in the audience and our makeup artists and everybody. It was a warm, happy, really beautiful set to be on. And I think a lot of that um, came from the kids, honestly. Uh, I didn't know what to expect uh, working with a bunch of special needs kids, but they were the most impressive actors I've ever worked with. So it was really, really delightful. And Robin, give us uh, your thoughts uh, on not only the film, but coming back to Huntsville. And uh, you were here for part of the filming. And then you, you arrived and uh, we took you around a little bit this afternoon and showed you uh, how it's changed a little bit, both Space Camp and Aviation Challenge, uh, with your sister and niece. And uh, you again uh, saw it uh, this past Monday up in Grand Rapids and Wednesday in Los Angeles. I've had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, i got to tell you, Huntsville is a beautiful city. And the people here just really love their city. And uh, it felt really good to be back. When Mike and I were doing this, we came down quite a bit. And yes, we saw, we stayed at the Marriott. We were very fortunate. And then we were able to be here. But every time, we found a new place to go to. And, and we met more people. But our, our love is here because Deborah opened the door for us. And um, she made us feel special. And she made us feel so special so that we could make our children feel special. And it truly was a miracle. And Mike, uh, you had some wonderful words a week ago Thursday in Houston down at the Johnson Space Center. 
and uh, now you've seen it several more times. Uh, how would you reflect back now on this uh, project? Well, uh, several weeks ago, before I went to Houston, this nice lady here pulls me in her office and says, you need to see the movie. I don't know how you're going to handle this. You need to see it. I made a promise. No, I'm not going to see it till it gets to the big screen. I'm not going to do a little separate viewing. I'm not going to do it here. So the more I saw her, the more she encouraged me. And then when I went to Houston and saw it, you catch things like, I didn't see my girlfriend in the movie until tonight. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> she said, there. Because you're looking for so many people that's been so important in this movie. And every time I watch this, I learn something more. And I know I'll be watching a heck of a lot more and, and I'll be seeing a lot more. But as Louise referred to, 200 and some members of a family made this happen. It wasn't just us. It was 200 and some. And I am very, very proud of all this family came together and made it work. But more importantly, John Corbett told me something the night of graduation we shot the final scene. And I didn't really pay much attention to it until he brought it to my attention again at the LA premiere. He said, Mike, you're going to be in mourning. He said, you have 200 and some people working with you and touched your life like you touched so many. And they go on to do their things, their next movie, their next project, whatever. And you're, not, you're left with memories. And don't mourn, but rejoice. So when I ran into him in L.A., he said, now comes the premiere. How do you feel? And I said, exactly the way you told me that night of graduation. And I can't thank John and Jesse and all the actresses and actors as much as it's, they say it's Mike Curgis. It's a total team effort. <clears throat> Teamwork makes the dream work. And if we don't have that, just like they sell the message here at Space Camp, he had to sell the message to my kids, Robin's kids, that if we don't do teamwork here, you will fail. Because nobody's any better than anybody else. Everybody, being a mission specialist, to a flight director, to a pilot, you're all number one. There is no sub-performer here. We all have to equal on equal grounds. So, you know, I, I was truly inspired by my kids that you know, I promised them that I would write a book. I did that. I promised them that I would get it made into a movie. <laughs> it took me longer than I thought. <laughs> Went through a lot more rough patches, but we did that. And I just want to leave you with a closing. I don't think Scott remembers this, but I do. Because Scott said something the night he got that medal that lasted with me to this day, and I put it in the book. And he said this, I remember, I don't know if you remember this guy, who went to the table and made you sit down, but never the media sitting there. And he grabbed the microphone calmly, collectively, and said, we didn't think we are going to win because sometimes people don't like special people. But we won and we love it. And right then and there, I knew I had to be inspired to write that book. And I thank you for that, Scott. Yeah. is just take a, a few minutes if you've got a, a few questions for our guest up on the stage and we've got two of our crew trainers with microphones they're going to head up the middle and Tim Hall over on the far right is going to help us out here so if you do have a question please raise your hand and we'll uh, we'll, we'll let the uh, panel feel that start good evening uh, I'd just like to more make a comment than a question 
I happened to be around at that time during that uh, era and what you guys did for us as a group, as an organization, is really teach us as an organization just how far we could take Space Camp. You made it so special for us in terms of taking us and making us learn. And it was a beautiful, beautiful time. Thank you. Where the students are today, were any of them so inspired that they're now involved in the space program? Well, it's funny you should ask that. Uh, I put over 3,000 special needs kids through space camp since 1989. <laughs> one little quick story. It was has to do with one little inner city kid in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, he went to space camp with us when he was a sophomore in Advanced Academy. And I would never forget this. He pulled down my shirt and said, Coach, I'm going to work at NASA someday and I'm going to call you. And I said, yeah, okay. I hope you get that drink, big guy. He went to Cuyahoga Community College, graduated from Cleveland State, went on, got his engineering degree, and one day, from NASA Glenn Research Center, I get this phone call. He says, hey coach, do you remember the kid that told you that I'd be working for NASA someday? I said, yeah. He goes, I'm an engineer. I work for NASA Glenn Research Center. Uh -huh. Hey, Coach Mike. Yes. Thank you very much for your uh, your book and your movie. Uh, thank you. Uh, could you please tell us what Stephanie Franks asked you or called you? <laughs> she used to call me. <laughs> Hey, coach, you sexy baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that about wraps up our question. <laughs> closing comments. First of all, we want to thank um, the uh, state of Alabama, Lee Santel's office. He uh, helped uh, uh, provide uh, uh, some funding for us tonight for this event so the proceeds could go towards scholarships for special needs kids to come to space. Uh, we also wanted to thank uh, also the Alabama office they were instrumental in helping uh, uh, to work with everyone and also a special shout out we've got a few folks here and I'd like to ask them to stand if they're still in here uh, way TV uh, 31 first news helped us quite a bit with all of the promotions leading up to not only tonight but also for Sunday night that's the key night you've all seen it here uh, but we want you to go home and watch it and uh, let's knock those ratings out of the sky on Sunday night friends around the country uh, to, uh, to watch at that time. But we've got Keith uh, Lohorn here. Keith, if you'd stand up, if you're still here. He, yeah. okay. Also, uh, Eric Wood, you helped out a lot back here in Huntsville and also with some of the coverage today. And then also Shay Allen, who went out to L.A. She's editing. She's editing. So Keith has got her working right now. Okay. But uh, you saw the coverage beforehand from the red carpet stuff. Uh, she did all that uh, almost solo handed uh, out there to get all that, get it back to Huntsville uh, that same night, and then edit all this coverage uh, for us for today. So thank you to her uh, for everything that she did there. Uh, 
When you exit the theater again, we've got your gift bags and their uh, gift bag for uh, each couple or family with the book, the movie. And uh, Mike has already autographed the books, as I mentioned earlier. Oh, uh, yeah. But he will be, <laughs> he remembers that earlier today. He will be under the Saturn V third stage. Uh, and uh, he'll be signing them for our general reception, which is about to let out. We've got about 350 folks upstairs that have been watching it, as you've watched it in here. So a terrific turnout from Huntsville. Yeah. Many of the other extras were in that crowd. And uh, so he'll be signing books for them, but he'll also personalize yours uh, if you'd like to do that as you exit the theater. So with that, we will say thank you to Hallmark Hall of Fame and uh, terrific job again.